Welcome to the locker room. Coming up on tonight's show, La Liga's title race is most definitely on. We look back on the controversial penalty decision that blew the top of the Primera table wide open. Rest the best. How do Unai Emery and Zinedine Zidane approach their league games this weekend? And we have a triple whammy of top of the table games in the Serie A, including the Milan derby. We welcome former MLS star and Guatemalan legend. Hey. 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 Thank right. you for joining us. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kay, Ray, Thomas, Gary. Hello to everybody in home. In home. Yes, yes, hello to everybody. And we expect you to be on Ray's side and argue with these two because that's usually <laughs> how it works. <laughs> on this I'm ready for that. Table. All right, let's get started. Barcelona welcome Atleti to the camp now on Sunday with just five points separating the two sides. Now, in the midweek round of action, Atleti won their game while Barca dropped points in theirs. And the reason they did was due to a controversial penalty decision, one that's been dubbed the invisible penalty. So let's take a look back at that decision, because even the commentators on the call for this one midweek, it was Andres Cordero, Matteo Bonetti, were at a bit of a loss as to why the referee whistled the penalty. I, I was watching it on the Spanish side at the home that I was at, and uh, at the Spanish lads were equally bemused. Uh, ball comes off the, the upright and strikes the... Uh, the player coming in, Digne, I don't think there was any attempt to play the ball at all. Um, there was a foul on the front post with Sergio Roberto as well, but there you see there's a little pull. I thought that one was what it was given for, but it was a very, very... In fact, the, 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 the blatant one for me was Vermeulen <laughs> getting yes, pulled down. Yes, true. That was the yeah. first uh, infraction for yeah. me, but anyway, it went... Uh, that's Palmas as well, La Hoss, you know, the referee. You know, it's a pity is that the referee doesn't come out and say what it is because yes. we shouldn't be guessing. Exactly. He should come out sure. and say, I gave it for this reason. Or if he doesn't tell us, he should tell the players, he should tell the coach. But sure. he didn't seem to tell them, which makes me wonder whether he was confused because initially his hand went up as the Malin went down. Yeah. But so you, you think, but it, it wasn't Gary? that. Then, then there was something at the near post and then there was and something at the, the far post. Yes. Even the, you know, the Las Palmas uh, players, usually when there's a penalty kick, yeah, they would all, appeal. All, yeah. I mean, they didn't even appeal for it. <laughs> they got the penalty. But that wasn't all. There was other controversies. I don't know if we're going to be able to show them, but there was an Iniesta handball yeah, that I thought yeah. should have been given yeah. against Barcelona. And uh, one or two other weird calls. The one from the goalkeeper for Suarez. For me, that for me was a, a red penalty. card. That Absolutely. For me. It's, yeah. a, it's a, yeah. Yeah, a red card for sure. But how does he not see it then? I don't know, Gary, but I think, you know, like you say, the referee has to come and say, you know what, guys, I'm a human, I make mistakes, mm. I have seconds to decide yeah. what's going on over there, I see many bodies over there, and I thought it was a penalty, I, see, I think the people are going to understand that, but sure, because I don't sure. see it, I, th I see a foul against Bermalin, yeah. and then something yeah. happened in the near post, yeah. I think the ball hit that hand, so there's right. many plays in one, in sure. one corner yeah. kick, I mean, yeah. I think we, like you say, we, we are not going to be guessing what happened yeah. here. I think, you know, at the and end was, of the day, it's human. But the there one with the goalkeeper tape, was. There was videotape eh? of, of La Hoss in the tunnel as well, speaking to um, uh, Luca Dinier, saying, I cannot give what I can't see. I didn't see it. No, that, that's Even that's really weird, especially but, when yeah. there's no video review in La Liga, which they talk and they've announced today that it will be coming next season. Thomas, does it ask a question of whether referees, like coaches and like players, should have to speak after games to the public and to the media to defend their decisions? That's mm. well, a tough question. It's, it's, Go on, it's you about, take that it's hot about, potato, It's Thomas. about defending your, your decision, which is a tough one. Uh, I think. I mean, if you look over time, it comes out of the wash. We, we, we talk about the game that Umtiti potentially had a handball PK, handball to goal, Barca wins 2-1, and now they get something. It, it happens. I, I think it's a human error without a doubt. But if you look over the history, Barcelona does get a lot of favors, Madrid as well. But in saying that, that this is a game where the calls went against them, which rarely happens. VAR would eliminate most of that during mm. the game because people would <laughs> see that, obviously. And, and I agree with Ray, it should be like, don't like the NFL. Mm. Not subjective, it's either a catch or not. And if you can, and if you can define that, all right, the call on the field will stay, and VAR will be implemented in La Liga, I've heard, also in the World Cup, which they're going to 
It's done in England. It's done in, sorry, it's done in Syria. It's done in MLS. A lot of other confederations cup work was received okay. I think it's very important for the business aspect yeah, of La Liga sure, to sure. get things yeah. right but and forget about the hand of God, Terry Henry keeping Ireland what about, out of the uh, World Cup, etc., etc. What, et what about back to the question, though, is whether a referee should say it? What, what stops, why shouldn't a referee walk up after a match and explain it? He's made a decision, mistake or not a mistake. Which he's going to have to write in his report exactly. anyway. So but we should, we as the public, we as yes. the media should, and the players in particular, a manager, yes. should be told. And if you've made a mistake, I agree with you, you made a mistake, you say, you know what, I could have sworn it in his hand. Now that I've seen the replay, it hasn't, but that's life. And it is life. It just it, goes on. In South America, a lot of referees from Argentina go to the press conference and say, what's my Do mistake? I didn't, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't see it. Back to the bar, I think... If we use the bar, it has to be for white and black, no gray yeah. points, clear right? Error. A clear, clear error. Clear error. Yes. And this is my point. If you're using the bar, the referee who is on the field has to go to, re to, the, to the camera to see the replay and not the ones who are upstairs because they don't feel how mm -hmm. the, the game over there. You it's, know, if you go over there for a little bit just to watch it again, you know, say, you know what, guys? I, 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 I want to change my mind. I'm going to stay sure. with my, what I and say. Added to that, I believe that the people in the, in, the, in the stadium, the people who are making the trek to these stadiums, yeah. paying yeah. their money to watch the game, mm. they, should, uh, they should have the privilege of seeing what the controversy is and, and not screen. be isolated because the people mm. sitting at home are seeing yeah. all the replays over and over That's and over. That's a tough one, Rocky. Yeah. I know. It's nice. It's, uh, I like it. One of the reasons why they stop yeah. that is because yeah. you get that yeah. violence all of a sudden mm. and if you're real emotional. I, I mm. think if they do the three decisions and, 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 and goals... Is it a goal? Oh, yes yeah, or no? Yeah. Like, Penalties? Yes. Is it yes? yes. Red yes. card or no. second sure, yellow card? Sure. That's sure. it. But not like uh, around the midfield line, PK made a foul and then yeah. three plays yeah. later sure, it might sure. have yeah, make it clear. It back. Yes. Yes. Right. At the end of it all though, Kay, we, uh, just last question, on, uh, last statement on this. We are going into an area where the game is going to change mm -hmm. and these decisions that are going to be made now, who's going to adopt it, how it's going to be uh, configured over the time, these are, this is a huge, huge step in the development of our game. It's going to change, and it may not be for the better, so they've got to get it right. I don't think VAR is right right now. It's, they, they can't make it work uh, it, it, as well as like the NFL, because it's a different game. But mm -hmm. something's got to be done to figure this out because right now it's 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 all over the shop. Hasn't, hasn't like it been that. good in Italy though? I mean, it has. Really, but then, really but then well there's well criticism there. yeah. in Italy that yeah. they're reviewing too many of the decisions. Uh, okay, decisions they're using it too often. Too far okay, so it, it works. It's just they're using it too often. That's, that's the all. Point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So right. it's an interesting one because mm. the Champions League are not going to go with it right now. The Premier League, the jury's out. It's just not ready. It's one will follow. Ray says it's not ready. Anyway, you know what they say when the title race is on in Spain. What did they say? I Liga! Liga. What does that mean? What does that mean? There is league. It literally means there is league. There so is the league title is on. Liga. Yeah, I Liga. I Liga. And what a time for Barcelona and Atleti to be facing off. And what a network to be bringing you that game live in all its glory with Ray Hudson on the call. Oh, and Antoine yeah. Griezmann in the form of his mm. life. Is he ever? And I tell you what, a big part of his success for me comes by the man riding shotgun next to him. Uh, Diego Costa. Yeah. For me, this is yeah. an improved yeah. player since he come from the APL. He looks sharper, he looks more aware, Carlos. I don't yes. know how you see him, but this yin and yang that them two have got going are complementing a very solid, very, very good Atletico Madrid team. Yeah, I agree with you, and I agree because Atletico Madrid knows how to explode these guys at, uh, when, they, when they go the transition from defense to forward to the offense. Quick. They really run behind the, the, the defenders. So they really know, they don't need a lot of passes to find them. So they're, they're uh, doing that, you know, trying to find Direct. Griezmann, trying to find Diego Costa, and they, they, like, they speak the same language. They yeah. see each other and they know how to run, where to go, uh, if you're coming to receive and if you're going, going come back. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, a, it's a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of potential here and with these And it's a little bit guys. more with Diego Costa. I agree with you 100%. I think he's made the difference, and not just with his ability. I think and sometimes you get in, in teams, you get a player who walks in and just bosses, bosses the dressing room. He's aggressive, he's in yeah. your face. He's yeah. the sort he's of guy, if, if you're guy. playing, you want him in your team. Yeah. And suddenly, he's attracting all the attention of the defenders and Griezmann has been able to just disappear and pick see, up balls and, yeah. and, that, and that's brought Griezmann me, to life. See, he's always been that Costa. He's always been that volatile boxer's sharks that he is. 
But for me, technically, when I've watched him, he looks a better player. He's much better now. Yes, it's true. He does. Right. So does the EPL make players better? No. Uh, come on. Don't say that, Ray Hudson. Do not say that, Ray Hudson. But I'll tell you, <laughs> I, 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 think, I think the game is going to be Valverde's game in terms of who is he going to start at home mm -hmm. in right now. They win, it's over. They lose, it's two points. Mm -hmm. He has to start his best 11 right, right now. They're going to look at Fulgar and say, okay, is Coutinho in your best 11 with Iniesta? Is Dembele a starter, yes or no? Ooh, no? And this whole fight will be won in midfield where Thomas has been unbelievable, yes. unsung here for Atletico Madrid, yeah, quite Thomas frankly. Thomas Partey, bring yes. the party. Now, Barca's <laughs> form has been patchy, even though they're unbeaten. Since February 1st, they've gone win, draw, win, draw, win, draw, win, draw mm. in every competition, where for Atleti, they've won all eight of their last games. So going into this one, we obviously have to ask you your predictions. And I think we'll be starting with Carlos Ruiz on <sighs> this one. Are you going to be drawn on Barcelona or Atletico Madrid? I'm going to say Atletico de Madrid. But because in football, with soccer, when you are motivated, it's another thing. And Atletico de Madrid is getting motivated game by game, game by game. And it's coming thinking if we win this game, we're going to be at two, two, only two points. Mm -hmm. And Barcelona is coming from tie, win, tie, win. And I think they are scared right now about this Atletico de Madrid. Now, this is my thing. If Atletico de Madrid finally is going to be the team who proposed on the game, or is going to be the team who is going to wait and see what's going on in that I game, that's so. the big question. Mm -hmm. All right, so you're going for Atleti. Yes. Ray. I'm going to go with Barcelona. Um, I, I think it'll be a very tight game. It'll probably be a draw, but I don't like draws, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stick me hot on my sleeve and go with Barca. Thomas? I, I'm going with Atleti as well. And I'm lo just looking at clearly at form right now. And, and, and the way they've used at 12 or 13 people, not 14, 15 or 16, which Valverde has done. And now he has to make a decision on Great what's point. my best 11. And I really feel that Barca this year, somehow defensively, you, and I yep. talked about it, Ray, yep. there's something not yep. there. And Costa, Griezmann, those guys will expose that. I pick Atleti. Atleti for you, Gary Bailey. Guess what? Game for the draw. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep for everybody me, happy. Barca, Barca don't have to win. A draw is good enough. It keeps them five points clear. They have so much talent. And I mean, you can pick recent form, perhaps, but they're still unbeaten in the league. They're still still five points ahead of Atleti. They're, so they're, why are you they're picking Barca then? You because give all the because why. they just need to draw, and it's going to be they're tough. They're not going to come out and, and play for yeah. draw No, they won't. Home. But against, against Atleti, it's a very tough, very tough opponent. To, to tilt the table, though, Possibly guys. not, but they don't need so to take any risks. Okay, so, so you've gone for a draw. I'm sorry, Ray. I had to go for a draw myself. In yeah, guys, I like I couldn't be drawn on the two of them. Anyway, do not miss that game. It's coming up this weekend on Be In Sports. Phil Shane and Ray Hudson will be on the call for it Sunday, 10 a.m. Eastern. What a game it is, just five points separating the two. Still to come, plenty. La Liga, we've talked about. We'll be returning there to talk about Real Madrid as well. We'll be talking about the Serie A, which is on fire, which players should be rested from PSG and Real Madrid, and more predictions too, because they make us smile, and hopefully there are no more draws. <laughs> It's a super weekend of fixtures in the Serie A. Sunday brings with it the Derby della Madonnina, the on-fire Milan, who've been on the rise, versus their city rivals, Inter, who've been on the decline. But what happens in this one? Can Inter bring a halt to Gattuso's rampant run with Milan, Thomas? <sighs> I love both, but, but Inter has some key components that can make it very hard for Milan to get success in the San Siro. And I'm looking forward to this game like I've not looked forward to an Italian game. Well, I shouldn't say Juve and Napoli, but these two. When I grew up, Gary, mm. it was Milan yeah, and it was oh, yeah, Inter, yeah. you know, no questions asked. And, and Skinnyar has been really good for them. Uh, Nokia has been, been really solid as well. Uh, the Sino in midfield has been really a facilitator oh, there. Havalero. Han another one. And Handanovic, although we're talking about Donna, Donnarumma, obviously, being really good. I think that Handanovic's experience is still is yep. still better and makes him a better goalkeeper right now. You don't sound convinced, though. I, I <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to talk Ask me who's going to win. Who's going to win? Thomas. It Milan. <laughs> Come Thank on. you, Kay. I couldn't. I, I think it's a round-the-table Milan pick, and I want to know why. 
Why for you, Gary Bailey? Just form. They're in fantastic form at the moment. And Gattuso seems to be the man with the magic uh, touch. He's like a clock. He's all, he's buddy-buddy with them. He's got them fired up. They're unbeaten in the last 12. And, and coming into games like this, form is vitally important. So that's why I'm going for Milan. Yes. How has yes. Gattuso got this from his players, Carlos? Uh, unbelievable. I mean, he changed everything. And I think that's what Milan needs. Somebody who knows the story of the club mm -hmm. and, you know, to... to step up on the locker room and all the players look at him and respect him. Right. I think Milan, they, I mean, they, for the last 13 games, they didn't lose. And they, the last, the, the last game they lose was December 23. December 27, they won against Inter. And since then, the mm. you know, they, they start winning, Stein winning. And I think this Milan is gaining a lot of respect. It's in the final of Coppa Italia, playing Europa League. And Inter is out of the Coppa Italia. Don't play in Europa, any tournament in Europe, and he's trying to struggle in, yeah. in, in, in Italy. Maybe so I think tired legs, though, after that cup again? Yeah, I think I'm both of them tired, but, you know, this is a team that's beat uh, in, uh, in, the, in the Copa, as Carlos was saying. So they've, they've had their number before. They're the hot hand. Gattuso, as Carlos said before, is having the Zidane effect on them wearing mm. the uh, bandera and showing what the colours mean. He's brought it out of them. And the kid, Cotroni, this is the mm. kid who we have to talk about because he's keeping out a, big, a lot of big, expensive players on the sideline. Mario Benetti was uh, one of the lads who told me this is part of the reason that it's invigorated this Milan side. Seeing the kid from Como, I think he is, is from, that uh, comes into this team and is keeping the big signings away in doubt so uh, everything's going right for Milan I think the hot hand keeps going it was a whole pick of Milan from the whole panel on this one so we'll see if Inter can change it up we'll talk about Lazio Juve we'll do our predictions for that one Carlos Ruiz Lazio against Juve Juve who've still been grinding out the results are still unbeaten but don't quite look themselves of late do you no. think they'll beat Lazio yes Juve, <laughs> Ju Juve is gonna is gonna win this game and I think uh, for for Iguain, uh, he got called for the national team. For him, it's an extra motivation. I think the Juventus is is playing uh, very not that nice, but he's getting the results. So I think uh, this Juve is going to win Ray. against Lazio. Right. Um, I'm going to go with. Um, I think I went with Juve, didn't I? I'm let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look. Come on, where's the same? Mm -hmm. Come on, let's get it going here. <laughs> Who did Ray pick? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Ray picked you. Right. I because it was it. I, I, I like this lads you were saying. There's a lot to like about them. Who, who do I like the best, Gary? Oh, Milinkovic Savic. Oh. That's the there one. you go. <laughs> okay, fair Scored enough. A brace. Pick. Thomas. Not enough to pick him to win now. No. Thomas. No. I will ask Gary next time too about that name. No <laughs> chance. <laughs> I'm going with Juve as well. I mean, yeah, it's not pretty, but they're getting results. It's the same way they're going to beat Tottenham 1-0 on the road. Ooh. Gary? Ooh. I've gone with a draw because I don't think this is easy a draw. for Juve. Yeah, I've gone with a draw. Lazio, 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 really? Lazio are a good side. Really? Lazio are a good side. Won four of the last five don't at home. Don't join them, Murray. Uh, and you tell what the big reason is? Is they've got their eye on Spurs next week. That's their big, big game. And I think they're going to rest a few players perhaps. And if they don't, they're going to be thinking, mm. don't get injured. I'm not joining big you. Big game. You're I'm not? not no, Lazio well, okay. beat them already this season. So I'm going to go for Lazio. Whoa. Whoa. You were picking you out nowhere. All right, Napoli out for an 11th consecutive league win. And there's always a lot of talk about their attack, but they've kept three consecutive clean sheets in all competitions. Now, in fact, they've only conceded 15 goals in 26 games. They will take on Roma at the weekend, Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. You can see that over on Bean Spots 3. And this is a really interesting one because Napoli obviously gained the advantage on Juve with Juve's game against Atalanta being postponed. Yeah. What do you think of this one, Carlos? I think Napoli is going to draw. They're going to draw. They're gonna draw? Why? Why? Draw. Ooh, yeah, that's uh, controversial. But I, I'm going to say it's this. Napoli is trying <laughs> every weekend to be on top of the Serie A. Every weekend. And probably, you know, this... Uh, they put it a lot of important in this tournament, and it, you know I agree. I, I want to be a champion of the Serie A too. But coming from, uh, don't make it. They don't make the next round of Europa League. I mean that's a, that's tough too because Napoli was the favorite to win that tournament with Arsenal and with Atletico in Madrid. I think they sooner or later they are gonna. They're gonna drop out. So yes. you've gone for a draw in this one, Ray. Napoli. No, Ooh. the pot no pee. <laughs> what does that mean? I don't know what it yeah, means. Yeah, we'll have to ask. Just the other one. 
I didn't. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing, you? <laughs> He's got a Marlins, man. Oh, I'm you telling you. You, you got hooked me in like a, like a <laughs> Thomas, fish. <laughs> if you've gone for Napoli, you've got to say it properly. I'm the Napoli. <laughs> <laughs> Napoli. That's. Every, but you game didn't. A, every game is a final you for, for them. The draw. I went for the draw. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but why are you saying Napoli? <laughs> well, because Jay asked me to say Napoli. Uh, I had to pronounce Napoli. Uh, That's yeah. why I did. Don't get La it. I said you were <laughs> Roma. 1 1. Carry the draw. Napoli. Not close enough. Oh, that's yeah, nice. All right. Okay. I mean, it's it's got to be Roma away from home are horrendous, and I disagree with Carlos. I think they have to win because, because if they it. drop points, because the whole that. season's no, work goes right. to waste. Yeah, so because of that, I'm Thomas, also I going you for Chenzi Napoli. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. Napoli have got to do this if they really do yeah. want to win yeah. the Scudetto. Big game. All right, with the last 16 return leg of PSG Real Madrid coming up next week, we ask if Unai and Zizou should rest their star men this weekend, at least those who are available to them. More predictions when we return to. Real Madrid lost another league game midweek, but all focus now is on the Champions League. If you're Unai Emery or Zinedine Zidane, do you rest Cavani and Cristiano Ronaldo? Absolutely, without question. And not just those two, but the whole bunch of first teamers. You can't take a risk. I mean, they don't need to beat Twa PSG. Seriously, they won the league. And Getafe, who cares? Real Madrid can pick up points later. But if one of their key players gets injured, it's going to be hugely costly. Why are you shaking your head? No, you don't. Players want to play. Players that are in form, especially, they can score goals, want to score goals in every game. Because physically and emotionally, that's the way they want to go into the next game. And Unai Emery can ill afford to say, you know what, Cavani, take whatever. He needs to play the two or three guys that are question marks. Mata needs to start. Marquinhos is probably out for this game, so he needs to have Silva and Kimpembe together. I would say start your best team. Carlos, would no, you, you're would taking you a huge play? risk yeah, for a big team. I mean, for, for Real Madrid, so you for might Real Madrid, take, okay, take six guys out. Rest them. Yes. Uh, why so not? Go there, go there. Why not? I six I agree. Six they should learn the lesson yeah. from oh, Emery no. and Neymar. Okay. Rest your stars. Yeah. Correct. Rest, right. rest, 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 play. play. Uh, rest them. Absolutely. Rest them. <laughs> 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 you have to rest. Thank you so much for joining us. Join us on Monday because we'll be looking ahead to that huge clash between PSG and Real Madrid and we'll find out if any of those players were rested, hopefully not arrested. See you later. Too far, well done.